Hey gang, this is Ken with my MyGPeep, and I appreciate you tuning into the video. Today's project, we're going to install some 2012 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited shocks and springs onto my 2004 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. I've done this swap a few times on a TJ, and usually gained around 3 inches of lift, so I believe the same thing will um, happen here on the Unlimited. So the first thing I wanted to do was go over the various parts we're going to use for this uh, project. The first thing is we have our springs off of our 2012 Unlimited um, rears, fronts. You'll notice the part numbers on the fronts are actually different. There's a 17 and there's an 18. Um, from what I understand, if you can actually get two of the 18s, then you might be a little better off. But this is what I've got, so this is what I'm installing. We have some bump stop extenders that we're going to use on the rears. Um, this basically makes it so when we install our rear springs, we do not have to stretch this hole out to get it to install. Some people will actually heat this up and bend it out, but it seemed easier to me to spend 20 bucks and get the bump stop extenders. We've got some coil spring spacers that we'll put on the front. Um, this is just to level things out. The rear the rear springs will give us a little more lift than the front springs so this levels us out. Um, these shocks they are from a Rubicon Unlimited so that's nice. Um, I did the bar pin eliminator kit when I installed them on my TJ and so we're gonna leave those on. These are the JKS ones. Okay we've got the Jeep jacked up. We have a jack stand under it and the tire for backup. Um, and sprayed a little PB blaster in here. I do apologize the lighting. It's a little dark in my garage, but it's really cold and rainy outside. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the sway bar bolt to disconnect the sway bar. And we're going to take off the bottom shock bolts. Um, once we've done that, we'll be able to lower the axle. We'll be able to pull this rubber grommet guy out of the bump stop. And there's a bolt inside the bump stop we'll remove as well. Um, up top is how you can get some access to spray some PB Blaster or whatever you like on top. Um, so I'm going to remove these bolts and then I'll start the video back up. Okay, the sway bar bolt, the lower shock mount, and the bump stop have been removed. So the next thing to do is to drop the axle down as low as possible. And usually I don't film this kind of stuff, but I want you to see. There you go. So that is now low enough that we are going to pretty much be able to just pull the spring right out. The next thing we're going to do is slide um, the new spring in. And it's over on the other side of the garage, so I won't do that right now. And then we're going to put the bump stop in the top. Um, so we stack the bump stop with the cup, the new longer bolt, drops in the hole and we'll put that in right there okay JK spring is in and spacers in and I was going to show you a trick here uh, putting these bump stops in back in is a pain in the butt so what I do is I put wedge or pry bar under it and then jack the Jeep up so it compresses the spring which forces the bump stop back into the uh, into the cup um, the other thing after doing this I'd forgotten is it's a really tight fit to start getting that bolt threaded. So you might want to go pick up a grade 8 bolt that you know half inch or quarter inch longer than the bolt that came with your bump stop extension. So I'm going to bolt up the sway bar, bolt up the rear shock, and be done. Okay gang, I'm back. It's actually about a week later. Um, I went ahead and installed the Rubicon shocks and I wanted to show you what the scoop was on this. So on the JK shocks, the lower eyelet is actually a hair wider than TJ's eyelet. Therefore, it's a little bit too wide for this bracket. 
Um, there's two ways to handle this. Some people like to just stretch the bracket out a little bit wider and cram it in there, um, which is viable. I know people have done that, no big deal. Um, the other option is to tap the eyelet a couple times with a grinder and narrow it down. So that's what I ended up doing. So it was no big deal. I did a test fit, ground, test fit, ground a couple times and it slid right in. The top half of the shock mounts just into the factory location with the factory bolts. No big deal at all. I think some people do a bar pin eliminator up top, but I did not elect to do that at all. Okay, gang, thanks for tuning in. Um, we did the front and the rear shocks and springs from a Jeep Wrangler Unlimited and stuck them on a, a Jeep Wrangler LJ. Gained about two and a quarter to two and a half inches of lift. Um, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the install. It went smoother than when I've done this process before. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, be sure to check out my other videos, um, especially the ones where I show you how to put the front springs and shocks from the JK onto the TJ or LJ.